in the set of all polynomials P sub 2, find the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to the standard basis C. Then find the B basis B coordinate vector for the polynomial 2 minus 4t plus 3t squared. So, let's simply begin by letting our basis B here be defined by the set of the three polynomial vectors. We'll say vector P sub 1, vector P sub 2, and vector P sub 3. And those are these three given vectors here. And so the first thing that we want to do is find the change of coordinates matrix P from basis B to basis C. So we know that this is going to be the matrix defined by the column vectors where we have the coordinates of vector P sub 1 relative to C. We have the coordinates of vector P sub 2 relative to C. And last but not least, we have the coordinates of vector P sub 3 relative to the basis C. And so this is what we are looking for. And so to do this, what we need to do is now rewrite each one of these given polynomial vectors in the basis. Or we want to rewrite them because they're in their linear combination form, their vector equation form now. We want to rewrite these as the matrix equation to identify the columns of the, coord the change of coordinates matrix. So here we go. We have the first vector, P sub 1, is defined by the polynomial 1 minus 2t plus t squared. We have the second polynomial in the basis B defined as 3 minus 5t plus 4t squared. And last but not least, we have the third polynomial, P sub 3, defined as 2 minus 2t plus 5t squared. And so we want to go ahead now and convert these vector equations to the matrix equation form. So we can say that this is the matrix defined by the standard basis C. So we have 1 t t squared multiplied by the column vector of coefficients 1, negative 2, 1. And by writing it like this we can more easily see that here is the change of coordinates matrix for the standard basis C multiplied by the coordinates of vector P sub 1 relative to basis C. So you can see the coordinates of vector P sub 1 relative to the basis C is the column vector 1 minus 2 1. And so there is the first column vector of the change of coordinates matrix. So we want to do the same thing for these other two vectors in basis B. So we have the change of coordinates matrix P sub C. So column vectors 1, t, t squared, multiplied by the column vector of coefficients 3, negative 5, 4. And so the coordinates of vector P sub 2 relative to basis C is defined by the column vector 3, negative 5, 4. And last but not least, we want to convert this third vector to its matrix equation form. So we have the matrix whose column vectors are the vectors of the standard basis for P sub 2 multiplied by the column vector of coefficients 2, negative 2, 5. And so the coordinates of vector P sub 3 relative to the basis C is the column vector 2, negative 2, 5. So we can now take these three coordinate vectors and plug them into our change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C. So therefore, the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C is the 3 by 3 matrix with the column vectors 1, negative 2, 1, 3, negative 5, 4, and 2, negative 2, 5. And so this is our, the first part of our beautiful final answer. And so we can now go ahead and use this to help us find the B coordinate vector for the given polynomial. So we are now ready to find the basis B coordinate vector 
for the given polynomial, we'll call it polynomial vector P, defined as, so it's given to us as 2 minus 4t plus 3t squared. So let's just start it and think for a minute, what exactly is it that we want? We want to find the B coordinate vector for this given polynomial. So we want the coordinates of vector P relative to the basis B is equal to what? And we also know by definition, so by definition, by that change of basis equation, we know that the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C multiplied by the coordinates of vector P relative to the basis B is equal to the change of coordinates matrix, or the, excuse me, the coordinates of vector P relative to the basis C. So we already have our change of coordinates matrix. We found this in the first part. So we can go ahead now and use this given polynomial here to find the coordinates of vector P relative to the basis, which will then allow us to solve for the coordinates of vector P relative to basis B by solving an augmented matrix with the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C augmented with the coordinates of vector P relative to the basis C. So let's go ahead and do this. So the first things first, we have this polynomial vector P defined as 2 minus 4T plus 3T squared. And this we can convert to in matrix equation. So we have the change of coordinates matrix relative to the basis C, which is our standard basis, 1t, t squared, multiplied by the column vector of coefficients, 2, negative 4, 3. And so we can say that the coordinates matrix, or the change of coordinates matrix relative to the basis C, multiplied by the coordinates of vector P, relative to the standard basis C. And so therefore we have the coordinates of vector P relative to our basis C defined as 2, negative 4, 3. And we're ready now to use this to take this coordinates of vector P relative to the basis C with the change of coordinates matrix we found above and solve. So... We again want to row reduce the augmented matrix. So this is the augmented matrix with the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C. And we are augmenting this with the coordinates of vector P relative to basis C. And we're going to row reduce this to row reduced echelon form. And so here we go. We have our three by three matrix. So the first the first column is 1, negative 2, 1. Our second column is 3, negative 5, 4. And our third column is 2, negative 2, 5. And we are augmenting this with the coordinates of vector P relative to basis C, which is 2, negative 4, 3. And we're ready to go. So we take our first pivot position and use it to eliminate the entries below it. So we'll do two at a time. We have two times the first row plus the second row to attain the new second row. And then we'll go ahead and do minus the first row plus the third row to attain the new third row. And so this will leave us with the equivalent matrix. And our first row remains the same. This is still one, three, two, two. And then we have negative two plus two is zero. We have six minus five is one. We have 4 plus 2 is 2, and 4 plus, min 4 plus minus 4 is 0. We then have negative 1 plus 1 is 0, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, negative 2 plus 5 is 3, and negative 2 plus 3 is 1. And our first column is all set. So we move to the second pivot position, and we want to use this to eliminate the entries above and below it. 
So we'll do minus 3 times the second row plus the first row to attain the new first row. And we'll do minus the second row plus the third row to get the new third row. And this leaves us with the equivalent augmented matrix. So we have 1, 0. Negative 6 plus 2 is minus 4. 0 plus 2 is 2. The second row remains the same, 0, 1, 2, 0. And then we have 0 plus 0 is 0. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. Minus 2 plus 3 is 1. And 0 plus 1 is 1. So our second column is all set. And we move to our third and final pivot. And we'll use this position to eliminate the entries above it. So again, we will do two steps here. We'll do four times the third row plus the first row to attain the new first row. We'll do negative two times the third row plus the second row to attain the new second row. And this leaves us with the matrix. So we have one, zero, zero. Four plus two is six. The second row will become 0, 1, 0. And then we have negative 2 plus 0 is minus 2. And the third row remains as it is. 0, 0, 1, positive 1. And so this tells us that the coordinates of vector P relative to the basis B is equal to the column vector 6, negative 2, 1. And this is our beautiful final answer.